Hey all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how you can supercharge your next Microsoft Word document. And I'm sure you'll agree that Microsoft Word has come a long way since those early days. And using that great new capability from Microsoft Loop called Loop Components that bring in live dynamic components into your Office product and can be shared across Teams and Outlook, and also bringing those now into Word means we can create live dynamic quizzes, checklists, task lists, and polls inside of your document that you can share with your colleagues. So let's get started with checking out that new capability and show you how it all comes together so you can apply it into your next document. And just before we do, we would love it if you hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel to find even more great content like this. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get straight in and show you how to use those new capabilities to supercharge your next document. Now to get started using Loop Components in Word, we must firstly use Word Online. These features are not yet available in Word for Desktop, but no doubt in the future we'll see them arriving. So I've headed into office.com or microsoft365.com and then from there I've selected Word on the actual app bar here to the left hand side and I go ahead and create a brand new blank document. Now for this document, it's actually gonna be a training document introducing one of my colleagues to the world of computer programming. So with that content which I've got here, we can begin to use Word Online to change the formatting and adapt all the text here. Now, of course, these training documents are very useful, but what we also want to do is quiz someone at the end of this document to ensure they've read the content and also understand it as well. So at the bottom of this document, I've now added a page break and a section header for a quiz. So you may be thinking the best way to include questions in Microsoft Word is to just add the question A, B, C, maybe even add a little space for them to add in their actual answer and they can print it off right. Well, instead, we can choose a different option. Using loop components, we can simply delete these quiz questions and instead we'll go to the ribbon bar inside of Word Online select insert and then select loop components. Now in this scenario, we're gonna select a poll. Now, of course I do appreciate that a poll is not a quiz, but we have the option inside of loop components to click down on the multiple choice and change this into a quiz. So now we can begin to find our questions and we can also mark the correct answer so people are aware if they've got the answer correct or not. So I'm now gonna add questions and answers for a couple of questions here in my document using loop. Now we have our two questions and we also, as we can see here, have highlighted the correct answer and we could also change that to multiple selection as well. But we're done now with our two questions. So I can left click away from this loop components and we can see them stored here. Now at the bottom of the screen, we can also change how the results are gonna be shared. By left clicking into names not recorded, results shared, we can actually also record the names of the respondents, which is only visible to the person that's created this loop component. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that box and also share aggregated results with those respondents. They know whether they've effectively clicked on the right answer or not as well. So with that in mind, let's click on preview and check out how that looks inside of your document. And here we are here. We have our document content above all around programming and here's our quiz on the second page. So let's go ahead and answer this quiz. So we're gonna put the first option to communicate with computers and purposely, I'm gonna get this wrong. I'm gonna put HTML as not being a programming language. I'm gonna now click on submit and we'll also now see those quiz results have loaded and I can see the correct answer was Photoshop. I unfortunately got it wrong with HTML, but I was correct, effectively in my programming language. So very straightforward for you to test and also for people to use that quiz. So how did it share this document with this embedded quiz for people to use? Well, in that scenario, we of course need to use Word Online still. So the best way to achieve that is going to the share button in the top right, and you can actually share this file with other individuals that you want to have access to. Now I'm gonna simply click copy link here for ease. So I'll select copy link. And in this scenario here, I can now select the type of link that's gonna be generated. So I'm gonna go ahead and then select this here. And I'm gonna change this now to people in Contoso because it might be shared across the company and people may want to understand a little bit more about programming, right? So in the bottom here, the more settings are really important because to add this loop component and allow people to complete it, they need to have effectively edit or review rights to a document. Now I don't want people changing my Word document. I like my content, 
So instead, I'm going to select can review. So they could only suggest a change, but they still have the ability to use that quiz. If I select can view, they won't be able to interact with that quiz directly on the actual Word document and will then be pointed to fill this out via a different means. So I'm going to select can review and I'm now going to click on apply. Now I have my sharing link. I can copy it, put it into that important email or put it into my SharePoint site and share it with others so they can also access my amazing training document and fill in our online quiz as well. Now you may be wondering, how can you access the quiz results that people have been inputting into your quiz? Well, you can actually go directly into forms.office.com and click into the form because Loop uses forms to deliver that experience. And we can actually click on responses and see the individuals that have responded to this quiz and check their relevant answers as well. So you actually click on review answers and we can also go through and review the individuals. Likewise, we can see aggregate if we also wanted to. So you do have the ability to go and check on those quiz results at any point directly through the forms interface. And supercharging your document doesn't end with quizzes. We can also use loop components to improve things like our project scoping document. Here we have a scoping document around building a community park as one of our projects. Now in this scenario, I have my document content here, and I'd like to understand people's feelings of this project scope document via a simple poll. Yes, I could send that on a separate email. I could even do a Microsoft form separately, but that's gonna take a lot more time. Instead, we can go up to Loop Components and we can insert a poll directly into my document here. When we do that, we can again define that multiple choice, actual question, or we can change to different options here. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a multiple choice question to understand people's thoughts on this project scoping document so then we can understand if further changes are needed. And there we have it, our multiple choice question around the actual input and whether people are happy with this scoping document. Again, we can go to the bottom and we can actually record a name so I'm visible again to who's potentially gonna disprove this. So we're going to have a chat with them individually, but I also don't wanna necessarily share the aggregated results in this scenario so I can uncheck that box. And once we've done that, again, we can click on preview and we can see how that would look inside of our Word document. And again, if someone's strongly approved, they go ahead and click on submit and that is then effectively stored and we can see the response there. So that's another great way to include a poll inside of your Word document dynamically that people can effectively go and select the relevant answers and you can get all that feedback via a simple poll. There's no need for you to browse away into separate systems. And again, it doesn't end there. Loop can also further improve this document. We have at the bottom a task list inside of our document that I may later need to put together in a project plan, in Microsoft Planner, and then allocate some tasks. But instead of actually creating this as Word content and text, we can again use Loop to generate our task list. Go up to Loop Components and select Task List. And once you've done that, we can now give this a title and add the relevant tasks, and we can even assign it to the relevant individuals and set due dates. So let's go ahead and fill out our task plan here. And there we have it, our community part task list, all created inside of Loop. And the good news is, Loop will also soon be synchronizing tasks between Microsoft Planner and To-Do, meaning these individuals with tasks will also have it immediately appear in their To-Do list in Microsoft To-Do. So there's no need for them to necessarily come back in this document and update it. They can just check that task off in To-Do and have it all synchronized back into this document. Nice and simple to run your task and use Loop components inside of your document. And then finally, we also have a project activity checklist inside of our document. And in this scenario, it's just bullet pointed lists. That's not so good as a project team and a scoping document to know what's been done and what remains outstanding. So can we change that with loop? And we can do that. All we need to do is again, go up to that loop option inside of the insert menu. And this time select checklist. And we can very simply create a checklist for you and your team to check off those activities as they're done, dynamically updating it inside of Loop and in the document as things get done. So let's go ahead and add all of our activity checklist. And there we have it, our activity checklist. And all I need to do with person that has access, this component and document, is just go ahead and check off those activities as they're done. Easy as that, and they can all be checked off. But Loop components go further than just being inside of our document. In fact, any of these components I could take out and share in different applications and also give access in place. So it might be the case our activity checklist here 
needs to be worked on by others that don't necessarily have access to this document. Well, in that scenario, I can very simply copy the link for activity checklist and I can head into Microsoft Teams. And in Teams, I can open a chat message and I can share this component with one of my colleagues. All I need to do is create a new message and here I'll go ahead and send a message to Nestor, who's a director of the company. So here I can select from Nestor and I can add a quick message about the need to update the checklist. But without doing that, I can very simply just paste in what I've just copied and that loop component will sync into the Teams chat and I can go ahead and send it directly to Nestor and Nestor can also check off those activities and that will immediately sync back into that document. He may even want to add a fourth point and again that will synchronize back into the document. In fact, I can show you that now. Let's check off Hire a Landscape Architect as our activity. Now I've done that through Teams chat with me and Nestor in that conversation. Let's head back into that document and you'll also see that's been updated in place on the activity checklist. And all of your components have this capability to copy them, whether into Teams or into Outlook, and share that with other people, allowing them to update those components without necessarily having access to the document itself. What we've seen is we've been able to do is supercharge your document using loop components to have quizzes, to have polls, to have task lists, and also have activity checklists bringing into your Word document to improve the way you and your team work. So there we have it. You've now learned how to use those new collaborative features using Microsoft Loop to supercharge your next Word document. And that will also improve your productivity and the collaboration in your team. And I'm sure a few people in your team are gonna be asking how you managed to achieve some of that great capability that was in your document. Now, of course, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to find even more great content like this. And otherwise, we'll be seeing you in the next one.